I also started recording, so if uh, any of you had anything to say about that, the time has passed. I'm sorry. Um, we will still wait a little bit for, I guess, because I'm guessing. Let, let, how how do you want it, Jakob? Maybe three minutes grace period. Uh, yes, yes. I usually have a grace period, and I I have a I have a since nobody knows who I am, I need to like establish myself. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Uh, here. So a bit. Uh, first, a bit of yes. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? No, uh, no. Uh, let's just wait two more minutes, I guess. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then I'll uh, I'll start establishing uh, yes. the, the the context of of this talk. Yes. Uh, and uh, from from now on to the point where I ask questions, nobody talks. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you can talk in a cafeteria, uh, and uh, like the first thing that uh, that is uh, <laughs> establishing this talk is the amazing uh, title of the talk. Uh, background uh, to to all of this was uh, was uh, the last lecture by uh, by Merten, uh, who was talking about narrative things, and then I then I like I, I had my head full of all related narrative things uh, from uh, my other life uh, uh, of uh, of tabletop uh, role playing uh, and uh, i understood that uh, i need to share that uh, life uh, and i made made the most grand uh, name of a talk uh, that i could uh, master uh, that i could get away with uh, and uh, yeah <laughs> the I even even uh, like um, afterwards, I I thought of a story that uh, that fits this uh, uh, this talk very well. So basically, a sentence into a narrative godhood with uh, tabletop role playing methods, to me uh, it means uh, the skeleton uh, of the story. So um, there is always some structure to any narrative or, or story that we have, and. Uh, uh, by having a skeleton inside, uh, this is our like uh, I have skeleton within my arms. It, it makes me move. I'm very rarely aware of it, uh, and uh, I like uh, analyzing stories. Uh, what do they consist of? Uh, how to make them uh, in real time as uh, as a game master in a tabletop setting should, uh, and uh, that means that. Uh, in a way, it's a talk about skeletons, uh, where you put your own flesh or world building upon, and uh, and in other way, uh, it's uh, about uh, uh, it's about the thing uh, that uh, there's a joke uh, that uh, when Jesus is walking on the lake, uh, and and others are falling in, then he explains that uh, I know where the rocks are, uh, and. This is basically the rocks of narrative for me, at least. Uh, so uh, become Jesus and know where the rocks lie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I should. <laughs> but <laughs> you wanted to say that uh, that there is enough people. Okay. Yeah, because I don't I don't see what's going on here. Uh, so thank you. Um, okay, my background is uh, I'm be, uh, I've been like a tabletop role playing uh, fan for uh, 23 years. Uh, I started in uh, 1997, uh, and and I was fan even before because uh, uh, my desk mate was a fan of this game, and his brother was playing it in in the university, and these stories like uh, were uh, all told. <laughs> <laughs> to him and then to me and, and it was really interesting that you could uh, play a game which was kind of like a net hack uh, or, or or any uh, any rpg in a computer but you could do anything and uh, and that was uh, that was the primary point of uh, of, of doing it mm. and and i have been doing this uh, game mastering for a while uh have been really different uh, over the years um in my life, I was a long-time lecturer at uh, the University of, uh, of Technology in Tallinn, uh, which is uh, why I 
enjoy talking and this is this is what is going on like in the background uh, when when i talk i have like a whole lot of lecturing experience that <laughs> that makes me really really weird uh because it didn't kill me mm. and uh, and i was uh, i was in uh, a site called dragon ee which is uh, a sad sad museum of uh, of uh, a community that has moved on to a facebook and uh, and to their own lives basically there was uh, a lot of people who were discussing dungeons and dragons and later on uh, larp in general uh, yeah it was it was fun times and uh, and during that time i met people who later on uh, became uh, important uh, in uh, my being in the game which was called disco elysium uh, and uh, this was my last time when I talked about it, so I won't uh, touch that uh, more than I have to. Uh, and currently, I'm working on uh, an unannounced hybrid CRPG, which is like <laughs> the most that has been said uh, outside the inner circles about it. So there, are, there are some industry veterans uh, making a game, and I'm I'm the fly on the wall and looking. Okay, this is how they do it. Okay, this is weird. Uh, this girl is was made wasn't made like this. It's sometimes it's more efficient, sometimes it's less efficient. Okay, <laughs> this, this is how I would go. Uh, I have a Twitter handle by Jago Pirva, uh, and uh, if you have questions, comments, uh, or anything else, uh, I have a Gmail uh, account which is tied to my name, so you can. You can find and and, and send me letters and uh, and uh, and images of uh, yourself playing or I don't know whatever. Um, okay, uh, game mastering. I should check my time. Okay, uh, it's a race. Uh, game mastering. Uh, I started as a panicky uh, game master who was preparing everything. So uh, I did. Um, mm, all the preparation that I could think of. Okay, players might go there. I, I need to know what's underneath the tree. Uh, the most crazy thing that I did was uh, I put a skeleton under a tree uh, that uh, had, like, I don't know if there was even any hint of a skeleton being there, but it had a magical item. And the players, like, like why you put something that can't be found? Like an Easter egg for uh, for a game that so I basically I, I prepared uh, uh, I prepared so much that there was like five percent of uh, the game uh, that the players experienced, which is like nuts. Uh, but but this was me finding uh, security in uh, preparation, uh, and I have a story of the loading screen man. <laughs> uh, a game master uh, who was uh, had a lot of experience. I think it was five or five or six years of of, of games. He was a really good uh, guy. He made all the maps and had really good handouts. Uh, could show you uh, like uh, pictures of the houses where you could enter and so forth. If there was a village, every there was a map of village. There was a map of every house and so forth. And uh, at one time, we uh, I was playing with him. And uh, the most crazy thing happened, like um, uh, we entered a house to ask for something and he was like, OK, sorry, uh, I need to prep this. And then uh, he took like five minutes uh, to think about what is going on there, wrote down things, uh, draw, drew a map, and then he was back from the loading screen. Uh, and at some point in the dungeon, we had left and right turn and he said, uh, please don't go left because then I'll have to prepare for a few hours. Uh, and so we we turned right at that point. But this is this was like the most extreme uh, preparation guy who I have ever I have ever seen. So and and this is actually not the way how to run these tabletop things. Uh, I became this emer emeritus game master at some point, which uh, means that I have prepared so much that I don't prepare anymore, uh, or or at least I prepare uh, only the parts which I think that players will experience or which will help me uh, give the players a better story. Um, 
and uh, and and so in a way my preparation here is currently like my prior experience with games or in life in general and uh, and also the experience that uh, I can get away with this so uh, I could I could have this uh, lecturing experience for example also <laughs> work for me uh, i have slides but uh, i could have uh, one piece of paper with with notes and i could probably do the same same lecture um, uh, and and you as uh, as audience likely wouldn't notice <laughs> i guess uh, anyway uh, he has has a nice uh, game related analogy here uh, so basically uh, of of the concept artists uh, in gaming that I have uh, watched uh, sharing the techniques, uh, like uh, the most important thing to learn in the industry for them was that uh, you should know the shortcut and you should like uh, have no shame in using all the shortcuts. So, uh, Google images, uh, flip, uh, splat, 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 that uh, color filter, and I have something that. Uh, I can show. Okay, is this what we need? And and it's like half an hour, and you can do uh, lots of those instead of like hand painting everything. Uh, and 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 now the question about uh, about writers that uh, if if you're writing some gaming narrative, uh, I I think that uh, we should also not be ashamed of all the possible shortcuts that we can we can use. And uh, and this brings us to today's topic like again again uh, so uh, I think this role-playing background is also interesting uh, thing that you can uh, learn I would say in in a few years if you want to with corona it's much more difficult I guess you could take five <laughs> or, or, or you just risk uh, risk everything and and live to the fullest. <laughs> anyway, uh, I will. I will explain the tabletop role playing logic. Also, uh, currently, I have uh, started uh, going into some personal thing first. Uh, okay, I, I wanted to end uh, this uh, intro with uh, the idea that nobody cares about your mythology uh, while they're having fun. Like, uh, if you make a game that has uh, awful bugs but uh, amazes everyone. Hint, uh, Disco Elysium was that game. Uh, then people will love it anyway because they will like love the parts that uh, are amazing, and all the else is nah, okay, it happens. But if something fails, then suddenly everything collapses. Mm. I have had this uh, as uh, as a game master to my darkest moments of of three hours of traveling without nothing happening uh, on a on a boat that players were afterwards like okay this was just bad <laughs> and uh, anyway uh, that's that's a short introduction so basically what i wanted to say is that uh, i will provide some shortcuts i have some experience uh, and uh, and i i think that it's very very interesting uh, uh, cultural phenomena tabletop role playing games like there is very little um, uh, story culture left. So if you think of uh, all the stories that people are telling, like hundreds of years, uh, now it's sort of written in small bits and TikToks and things, but, but people are actually getting together and talking to each other and creating stories in, uh, in union. <laughs> and, and that's 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 really interesting. Anyway, uh, now uh, a few things uh, to uh, to get uh, to get a point across. So, what 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 am I going to do today? Uh, there's some random uh, tabletop RPG rambling where I uh, introduce you to some of the concepts which I think are uh, are interesting in in this field, and and they also apply to computer games to an extent, or at least. Uh, I think for me they do, um, and and I will talk about uh, meta plots a bit. Uh, there's a there's a hint uh, where you can uh, read more about it. 
And then I have three uh, different uh, role-playing games as an examples, which I think are useful uh, in either playing, uh, playing for plot uh, creation or narrative creation, or just as um, something that ex expands your thought process a bit, I hope at least. So there's a world building game, a plot building game, and a prep light game, which uh, which are interesting in, in in this case, and uh, and I have some proposals at the end that uh, if uh, if you think of uh, gaming narrative uh, and 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 tabletop role playing games, what are the things that you can uh, you can take home with you? So uh, there will be gifts at the end, <laughs> pre thought, and so forth. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, how does uh, tabletop role playing uh, work? Mm, usually, uh, what happens is that there's a game master uh, sitting at the table, just like I'm here, uh, and is is telling uh, to the people what is the situation currently. Uh, so, describe something to to base uh, the player's imagination on. Uh, it can be like. Uh, you're sitting uh, in the front of a cave, and uh, and there's a awful smell coming out of it, and uh, and and somebody screaming help. Uh, uh, what do you do? And then the players are next to me, and they go, "Oh, how bad is the smell?" <laughs> and, and and asking questions, uh, rolling dice to see whether skill checks succeed or fail, and uh, and and checking the rules or or. Uh, or dice, uh, or or just uh, what the game master says, and uh, and then they go in and, and start uh, saving uh, saving the peasant from uh, eaten alive by something that we don't know what is there. Uh, so, um, and uh, I would say uh, it from outside it it, it sounds weird uh, to some people. It doesn't work at all. Uh, like some people don't have uh, imagination. Uh, some people uh, find more interesting things to do, and uh, but but some people are like really into it. I would say, <laughs> like uh, there's uh, there's a challenge of playing someone else, uh, getting into someone else's mindset, and uh, and and wearing their brain, so to say. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's 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 it, it can be fun on on uh, for, for all different reasons. Some just like the world building or mystery. Anyway. <clears throat> So there's uh, this uh, back and forth uh, going pendulum uh, effect. Uh, I, I think it's described in one of the one of the games in uh, which I'm going to explain. So basically, uh, the game master gives you world fiction and rules, and uh, and the player has the player fiction and rules, and and uh, and using these, uh, the narrative is uh, given uh, to the players, and players react to it, uh, describing what they do, and also invoking the rules that. Uh, uh, that apply to that situation. So, uh, in a game, if you hit uh, some foul beast with a sword, then uh, some usually there's a dice roll, and uh, uh, some tables are consulted whether the mm, armor is thick enough, or, or whether the warrior is strong enough to penetrate the uh, the scales of a dragon, for example. Uh, and, and and this goes uh, goes as long as the session lasts. Um, then uh, you should be aware that uh, tabletop role playing has different styles, uh, and uh, and there are different styles of players also uh, that uh, like it. Uh, there's a miss there's a missing player also, which I need to explain. But uh, but basically, there's a narrativist player, uh, simulationist player, and and gameist player. These are extreme, like. You can be a mix of all those, but but usually people tend to gravitate towards uh, one of these uh, uh, three uh, extremes. Uh, the fourth uh, guy, <laughs> I would say, uh, is the loon. So basically, the person who doesn't take the in-game world uh, uh, seriously and tries to fool around with it. So basically. It's the player that, uh, oh, there's a torch. I can set fire on everything. And he does. 
So your you had prepared uh, um, your village, your village elder giving out the quest, but but suddenly the village is is gone, and and your all the preparation has been destroyed by a guy who was interested. In what's going to happen now? What what are you going to do, game master? And usually game master like tries to hit them or or play along, or there are different ways of dealing with that player. But uh, yeah, let's 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 talk about the interesting players now. So, uh, narrativist player is uh, is the guy who thinks that story is the king. Uh, very interested in uh, characters, developing his own character, uh, thinking about uh, plots, uh, scheming, uh, and enjoys when when there are like um, turning points that are unexpected uh, and things like that. Then there's the simulationist player who uh, is sandbox mode activate. And uh, enjoys um, when the world exists beyond the players. Uh, in narrative, it doesn't matter what happens, like outside of this room. Like could be anything. I could be on a ship or whatever. At, as long as the story here holds up. For a simulation, it's it's important what's going on, and, uh, and it's important that uh, mm, he wants to experience uh, a realistic world like a simulation of some fantasy environment. Uh, I, I would say, I would say, I have played with a game master who was simulationist. He uh, warned us before the game that, uh, okay, be careful. The world is full of dangerous things. Uh, if you stumble upon a dragon on first level, it is possible. We actually did meta beholder. If you want to know what it is, uh, we were first level, and there was a beholder. Uh, we were rather uh, surprised, I would say, <laughs> and and things happened. But but basically, uh, yeah, uh, that kind of uh, play is very interesting because uh, mm, those people who like it, uh, they know that uh, there is some economy behind it, and, uh, and, and, and they can go, go to places and uh, and experience very random weird things that uh, already exist in the world and don't exist in the world because of the players. Uh, also, very random, you can like die easily if you meet the dragon on the first level, and it's uh, it's really bad. And then there's the gamist player. Uh, I, I tried to find a funny quote, and the funny quote is, let's use our legal degrees to fight the orcs. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and these players are uh, all about uh, like killing stuff, defeating them, uh, and, and thinking about clever combination uh, to, to do so. Um, these players uh, would better be off uh, playing uh, Magic the Gathering, but uh, they are sadly playing in my Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, or uh, they're hopefully are uh, playing uh, both uh, Magic the Gathering and uh, Dungeons and & Dragons and, and, and using these uh, skills <laughs> uh, that they have uh, have gathered. Mm. I have already leaked that I am a narrativist gamer, so uh, yeah, story is the king here. Um, okay. Uh, and then the last thing uh, which I want to want to stop on uh, and uh, and and step up on and and uh, and and crush a bit this uh, uh, is uh, the word which is called the core story uh, and uh, I found it really interesting and if you start out uh, role playing you should be aware of this uh, core story thing because um, if you if if you ask me uh, that uh, you want to buy a laptop i ask for what are you going to edit videos in it, on it are you going to give it to grandmother are you gaming on it for some reason uh if you buy a car also the question is what are you going to do with it and and, and role playing rules are also not equal uh, the thing here is that um, some rules and some uh, stories fit together better it didn't used to be that way. People were using Dungeons and Dragons in the wrong way. <laughs> uh, for, because the thing is, Dungeons and Dragons uh, was meant uh, to be uh, one single story, which is kick down the door, kill the monster, and take the loot. If you know the Munchkin board game, basically, that is the epitome of Dungeons and Dragons. 
if you play anything else uh, like a uh, high fantasy uh, game of thrones type of game it is doable but the rules don't uh, play with you really well you have like a one or two social skills and uh, and if there's a fight then you either lose because of the social skills being uh, at high or you're very efficient and your social skills are either ignored uh, or or they're really low uh so uh and and there are others like other interesting uh examples uh, and they all come from my favorite uh, uh favorite rule sets uh, paranoia is uh, one of my favorites uh players get an impossible task and try to fake making it uh, while sabotaging the process and playing up, blaming other players. Uh, very dystopian. Uh, also, uh, it's it's really ridiculous what can happen there. Uh, and and player, it's it's player against player, uh, or at least the rules that encourages you to play it like that. Um, and then there's fiasco. Uh, pretty similar. I have it. Uh, it is uh, if you know what a Fargo. Uh, I hope it's visible. Yeah. Uh, if if you know the Fargo uh, movie, or basically anything that uh, Coen Brothers have uh, have uh, produced into a movie, uh, basically you play an ambitious person uh, with really bad impulse control. You have grand grand plan plans, uh, but uh, they fail because this person is really stupid. And uh, and that is one of my example games, by the way, today. Uh, I, I think this is uh, an interesting character development uh, uh, exercise, I would say. Uh, and, and in a way, there's an analogy that I was thinking about when I was preparing. Uh, we have core story and game loop. There is some difference. And there is some overlap. Think about it. Yeah, enough, enough of the thinking. Let's move forth because I have used up some of my time. By the way, uh, again, <laughs> in in usual, oh, sorry, uh, in usual life, uh, it would be so that uh, I have all the time in the world. Uh, but uh, once you get a child in your uh, apartment, uh, there is a child sleeping time, and the child has been really tired all day so he must be furious if you hear some uh, voices from outside it is the kid going mad because of the teething anyway uh, the first thing uh, that uh, i per personally found really really interesting about role playing and tabletop uh, role playing uh, theory was the big list of rpg plots by s john ross uh, and uh, before it was like before TV tropes became a thing, nobody had ever heard of a wiki. Uh, and uh, it was amazing uh, since it had like 35 uh, different plots for RPGs with their twists written down in this manner that you can see. The example is troublemakers, the bad guys are doing bad things and the party must stop them. Uh, and the twist, twist that the bad guys are wanted alive and unharmed. They have made preparations in case they got captured. The bad guy is a monster, dangerous animal, intelligent creature. Everyone thinks it's a monster. Bad guy has good publicity that you need to fight the publicity. Otherwise, you will need to fight the people uh, and so forth. So, so basically, it was, wow, this is like everything that I can ever play in Dungeons and Dragons when I'm a game master. <laughs> what? Uh, it was it was really abstract and 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 interesting because the, there were some also the uh, some universal twists like uh, players are observing this plot uh, happening. <laughs> Whoa, mind blown! Uh, you can still find it, but not uh, on the right um, or correct or original address. It has moved into uh, the TV tropes. So if you would type into the Google the big list of RPG plots, you will find it. Uh, I, I will post the link afterwards also. You don't need to Google it right now. I have a, a few other links which I have uh, already searched. This one I forgot. Uh, 
so what if you if you add it it's 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 great uh otherwise yeah let's 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 go forth because i i'm not going to stop it uh, or stop the lecture to uh to to read it through i would say a lot of this list is also a lot of what uh, rpgs or gaming plots are all about there are some uh, plots which are difficult uh, to uh, handle uh, but some of those are even like i think easier one of my favorite uh, favorites which i haven't played or 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 made a game mastering about this uh, that uh, players are in a foreign environment and they need to act like they belong while not knowing the etiquette of things like imagine that the, you're a spy and uh, you drop uh, into a high uh, diplomatic uh, environment like people or everything else is a diplomat but you're a rpg programmer what do you do how to fit in like smile wave how, how not to lose cover in the in such a situation um and uh, very difficult to plan but 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 interesting to think about anyway um moving forth we have half an hour of this so i have 15 minutes before you lose uh attention and i need to talk about something completely different but this is this everything has been so tightly packed i should already do it Okay, but, but this is absolutely good, uh, good difference. The first uh, game. So, so before I have been ranting about RPG plots in the in the most un, un, uh, unstructured manner. Uh, now it's all about Archipelago. Uh, this game is uh, something that I uh, got to know uh, because of a guy called Jason Morningstar, whom. Uh, We'll, we'll have a slide about him also. But um, this is a world building game, to me at least. Uh, it, also, it also has characters. Uh, I have uh, played it, I think, three times, and uh, I always want to go back for some reason. Um, you can find it online. Uh, if you type in Arch Ar Archipelago, Arch Archipelago, oh god, Archipelago three, and there's a PDF which you can download. Uh, looks like this. For some reason it's Dropboxed. Uh, it is uh, thirty pages. Really simple to read in a one evening, uh, and. Um, I'll, I, I, I'll bring some highlights. Uh, to play it, uh, it's useful to have these cards. I laminated them and, and sent a PDF and, and, and explained how to, uh, how, how to print them out. Basically, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show them in a, in a bit. But um, I think you can do it without or just by having uh, a small program here which randomizes the things. These are replacing the dice uh, in a regular RPG. Um, okay, I'll, I, I started going into details without explaining the outer outer shell. It's a game that was meant uh, to play uh, the Wizard of the Earth Sea style games. Uh, basically, the setting doesn't matter, but the like the general idea of uh, of, of highlands and and, uh, and and places and and, and long stories and, and calm. Is something that he, uh, the author, wanted to evoke, uh, and uh, this game plays slow. Uh, you start out by explaining, uh, like you pick a genre. For example, it's a cyberpunk game. Uh, uh, it's something else, and and then you start uh, talking about uh, what is cool about cyberpunk to just prepare your brain. Like it, it plays well with three or four people. So you need to have helpers. You can play it in your head, but just create different characters for your head. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, it, 
when you have primed your brain into uh, into thinking in the terms of the world that you're creating, uh, you decide on the important elements of that world uh, and who owns these elements. So basically, every player uh, besides a character has uh, some element that is uh, integral to this world uh, that uh, they rule. Uh, and uh, and this is to create some internal consistency and, and and give like ownership in the world to a player so that they they can relate to it. I think it's a marvelous idea and uh, and it, uh, it it has worked really really well. Um, then there is uh, a map uh, that you need to draw. So basically, freehand or whatever tools you use, uh, freehand is really good. And and mark down at least five locations or a bit more if. Uh, uh if you're if you want to play it several times which also i think is a good, great idea to have uh, several sessions because uh it's a world building game and you get more of the world uh and also leave room for expansion in the map you can add new places and but but the map draws uh, it's 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 a great focus for the game uh and then there are some meta rules of um of um, of narration and this is now very interesting. Uh, I, I think I have uh, I, I have them uh, on my next slide. Uh, so, in an improv improvised theater session, uh, you have this yes rule that whatever was mentioned, take it and roll with it and go forth. And this is the reality. And and it usually is uh, in all of their tabletop RPGs also that if the game master or player uh, says something, uh, this is now the reality. And uh, unless the rules say something that you can't, no, 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 you can't do it. Uh, then 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 people go and, and, and play it like that. Arpicular, <laughs> this game, <laughs> this game doesn't work like this. Um, it is meant to have this undo functionality uh, to push the players uh, to their fantasy extreme. It's very easy to go with the first idea that uh, you have. And uh, it really shows if uh, the writer uh, or game writer uh, goes with the first idea always. Uh, it's very obvious to everyone who has ideas that, hey, this is the guy who takes the first idea, because I can always guess what's going to happen next. So, if uh, you are listening to someone else explaining something, in this game you have this try a different way um, keyword, which tells that, okay, let's try some alternative to this. And and then the player can uh, go and explain it, uh, and uh, it's often better uh, on the second time. But but the other people should be willing to like say that okay, this thing isn't what we're looking for, and also describe that in detail. If something uh, like seems really really cool, then you can ask, go into details, please. Um, and 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 people come up with really really interesting things that you never would have thought yourself. So uh, in this game, I have experienced, I think most of the awe that I have, oh my God, this guy is, is so good, so great ideas. I never thought that this guy has really great ideas, but this describe that in detail enables them to uh, come up with these. Otherwise they would have just go, gone forth with whatever they had. Um, then there's that might not be so easy. That is when uh, the player is describing actions of the character they are playing. You later on have characters also, but I'm focusing on the world right now, explaining how it works. So, so this is just as an aside. This is when you think that uh, there's opportunity for drama or uh, or uh, or uh, some interesting possibilities that the player is not uh, taking the full advantage of. So you tell. This might not be so. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's my my bad. It's the harder <laughs> uh, that is uh, the one that you use uh, when uh, when the player is trying to cop out of something. That might not be so easy as the time when you use the cards. Uh, these cards are really cool. Uh, like, uh, and this is now the place I have the interlude. Uh, uh, interlude part is uh, is uh, <laughs> the non programming. <laughs> Think that uh, that you can rest and and drink your drinks and my voice is going slowly. Okay, the cards. 
uh, the cards, the trick to these cards is uh, they are uh, partial successes. Uh, for example, yes, and you earn a friend reward or a good reputation in the process. And um, uh, I took this uh, deck of cards. Uh, and uh, since New Year's Eve is a great uh, time when you can predict your next year. <laughs> Then me and my drunken friends started playing with these cards. There are some rather evil cards here. No, and something entirely unrelated goes badly wrong. And it's already bloody. Uh, there's also good cards here. But for some reasons, a lot of my friends <laughs> didn't pick them. Will I sleep with anyone <laughs> next year? <laughs> no, and something else goes really badly wrong. Uh, <laughs> and 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 there was there was like two girls who who had the exact same question and the exact same answers. Uh, one of them was like uh, devastated because she believes in that such a thing, and she actually like it it did came true for her. <laughs> and the other girl was like, "Fuck no." <laughs> and and and, uh, and and was was much more much more successful because it was like I'm going to like this I'm going to crack this fate now. <laughs> like it's all about the attitude, not the cards. Um, okay, that was uh, that was the short interlude, which was also the narration idea, which which we had here. Uh, which is uh, if, if anyone tells I'd like an interlude, uh, then you have a great idea. You can't interrupt other people's uh, stories but uh, but after they have concluded you can have a short like tiny bit of one minute of describing something cool that happens in parallel to the story like s somebody goes away and and then uh, the, the interlude is that the guy is putting the and stashing the uh, treasure somewhere that he has just st stolen and where the stash is might be really revealing of the character Anyway, and there's uh, lastly there's help if you have no ideas, then you go. People can suggest uh, things, and uh, I don't have a slide for it. But basically, how character play is done here in this game is that um, uh, that uh, uh, this um, you you have your spotlight time. You describe things when you're in spotlight, and. Um, you strive towards uh, some fate that has been pre-written by other players. Like you have two possible fates, or basically every player gives you one one card with a fa possible fate for your character, and then you are like slowly staring towards it. There's no hurry, but but it's it's useful to achieve it during the session. And if you achieve it, then you go to uh, then you start observing other fates so that everyone has their fate somewhere. Um, and and if if the question is that it might not be so easy, then then you have some randomness. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go forth. Uh, I mentioned partial successes, uh, and uh, and and the story of uh, scaring my friends has also been uh, told to you. Um, partial success is an interesting concept, and uh, and I think for RPGs, it is uh, one of the really really cool things that you uh, is underexplored. Uh, in the computer uh, RPGs, which means that uh, when you roll dice, uh, you, w when you fail, it's usually a hard gate. You go, you don't go forward. Uh, but there is uh, this fail forward principle that uh, that if you fail, it makes your story more interesting and it should go on. Uh, so uh, very early, uh, when I joined Disco Elysium, I said that we need to fail forward. And and somehow like the writers picked it up, and I'm really really happy that they did it because uh, the actually the game doesn't do so so much of this fade forward that I would like to like it's it's difficult to write all the failure parts, but uh, but in cases where it happens or your actual true cool successes is, is hidden by behind a failure, these uh, like players remember these, and and, and that was that was cool part anyway. In RPGs, it's also very useful to have. Uh, if if you're a game master, try to roll with the players and try to like nudge them, but never like block them. Uh, 
give a, give interesting twists to their stories. Anyway, uh, uh, Jason Morningstar was the guy who uh, taught uh, or, or told about the uh, archipelago game to me. Uh, he's the author of Fiasco, which is the next game which I'm going to explain. Uh, but he had a game which I like still think about. The, it was mentioned in passing, but it was uh, they play used the, uh, these rules. They had traveling circus, and their elements were family because like circus is one single family. Uh, crowds, which is like how what are the crowds uh, that appear that's completely outside of your control, but very very important to your success and uh, and and how it works. So one player was controlling the crowds and telling the crowds do this. No, 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 no. And, uh, and, and money, which is always scarce, like money things, uh, something breaks down, something arrives, and, and the drama is rolling. Uh, I think the setting is, uh, like, I would like to play some other game in the setting that I'm part of this traveling circus, going through towns, meeting people, ha things happening. Um, and uh, and uh, also there's game dev. <laughs> like imagine imagine game dev in the Ar archipelago that you have uh, elements, enthusiasm, money, and the reality. <laughs> you have to balance these. <laughs> it would be whoa, <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> Especially if all the people are uh, are, are accustomed to uh, <laughs> let's play it. <laughs> okay, but uh, I I would enjoy this. It has this PST <laughs> PT. <laughs> Post-traumatic stress disorder things going on for it. Anyway, uh, need to go forth. Uh, fiasco, game of fiasco. Uh, really nice uh, small book uh, explains how uh, it's it's run. It's about building uh, this uh, Cohen style uh, style plots. Uh, I think uh, it would work uh, as uh, it has two uses for us. Uh, I have slides for a uh, slide for one of these uses, but the other I should mention. Um, it is very good for these uh, Cohen styled uh, movie style stories. Uh, and I think that uh, if you're ever going to do something that uh, a detective is uh, investigating, uh, Fiasco can be a really, really cool way of uh, creating some of these plots which you stumble upon. Because uh, because uh, your characters are automatically a bit stupid, <laughs> mentally challenged, but but their plans are really cool, cool, great, and they stop at nothing in achieving them. And uh, and uh, uh, how this game plays, I think it needs a bit of uh, experience on the role playing side. You can't just pick people up and and start playing it with uh, with them because there's. Mm. There's some structural problem with the rules uh, in uh, in uh, in how the scenes start and 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 starting these scenes and setting these scenes is uh, is something that uh, I found difficult even with experienced players like they don't don't get how these scenes are made so it's there's some some block in 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 starting this game I guess. Uh, but it's uh, it's rewarding, and I, I have seen uh, people play it uh, like first time and, and 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 be successful. I've seen the author play it, uh, and uh, and that was helpful. But th there is uh, there is a let's play uh, of Fiasco somewhere out there, uh, and also there's a Fiasco two, uh, which uses uh, cards. This one the book uses dice, and so know that there are two versions of it. So anyway, the game uh, starts like this: that you decide or create a playset. Playset is set of uh, is a setting for your game. For example, some sur suburban uh, uh, American uh, awful homeowners association uh, cul-de-sac uh, place where people live and uh, and uh, are annoyed by each other's uh, house colors. Uh, and uh, I I think that there was an underlying UFO invasion. Also there, if you like, pick it up, <laughs> could happen. Uh, or, or it could be like anything. I, I made a thing. Uh, Estonia should know. Uh, depressive the Eesti Väikelinnad, or depressive Estonian small towns, uh, which you have your 
BMW uh, and, uh, <laughs> and 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 there's uh, there's a yeast factory that smells and <laughs> makes a weird things. Anyway, uh, you pick your setting and and then you pick all the players, uh, start uh, creating relationships, uh, relations between uh, themselves. Are they lovers? Uh, do they have need? Uh, is there on some object that defines their relations? And and then there's Act One, which is uh, players get two chances of uh, of playing the plot. Like usually you uh, see someone ambitious uh, trying to get uh, some treasure or, or or has has some plan and uh, and 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 then uh, when the plan is in motion, people uh, start discussing and taking scenes. And when everybody has uh, had their two turns, then there's a pause. People go away. There's like ah. Oh. Nothing ever happens here. They go eat. They go to the toilet. Uh, they think about the plot, or actually, they think about everything else. It's like the best, uh, like coding happens behind the computer. Debugging is in the toilet because, like, you have a time. To, you have time to think about your code, and and this story also had this. Let's go and eat and do something completely different for fifteen minutes. Uh, we should all do it, uh, uh, but but sadly, the kid is uh, is still not. Sleeping, so I'm on a timer here. Um, and then there's Act Two. Uh, also, everyone is playing, but but then in Act Two, there's uh, like this un. It's I think it's a written rule or suggestion that uh, don't kill people in Act One, but uh, but start killing them off in Act Two by accidents or whatever. So uh, here, people are dying or at least getting injured. And then uh, when everyone has played, then there's certain amount of rules to make an aftermath or what happened to this character later on. Um, I don't think that this fiasco stories that you create can be translated one to one to a game plot, but they definitely add uh, to mix uh, uh, all kinds of uh, interesting ideas uh, that you would otherwise miss because of uh, everyone is a different person. And, uh, and this is a collective way of uh, improvising something very interesting. Um, yeah, this is like the game runs in phases, and uh, what's really cool about this, uh, it tells that you play it uh, in two hours, and you play it in two or three hours, and it's it's done. You can do it in one evening without any preparation. You just have to be there and be alive and, and think through. Uh, my wife played it, never played anything before, and she was okay. She was really successful because she didn't like to lose, but. Uh, otherwise, uh, she brought incredible ideas. Uh, so, the key skill, or why I why I picked this game, uh, I think uh, for game developers, uh, it allows us to play and think uh, as a character that is spontaneous, is ambitious, ambitious. <laughs> okay, here's my typo, the awful typo which I can't fix. I can. Great. Uh, and the character who can lose a lot, or who will lose a lot. So there's a suggestion, or like use it as a car that you have uh, bought for nothing and uh, and and uh, are intent to destroy. <laughs> like your player is something that should arrive uh, smoking in the, uh, over, cro cross the finish line, smoking and burning. Like this is this is what the game is about, and it's it's a cooperative effort. And I think. Uh, Archipelago. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> this word, this word hates me. Okay, my brain doesn't uh, doesn't work. Basically, the archipelago game uh, is, is the game uh, that uh, uh, that uh, taught me that cooperation is cool and people have cool ideas, but uh, mm, uh, fiasco uh, has brought the most ridiculous ideas in. Like, it's a really fun game. If if you find the people to play it, um, right. Uh, then there's a game called Dungeon World, mm. uh, and uh, there's actually loads of these games. Uh, they're all sh share the keyword, which is powered by the apocalypse. Um, uh, apocalypse World was the was the first uh, first game 
and Blades in the Dark is the good game uh, in uh, in this rule set. But the dungeon world, or or why I picked this meta aware rule set, is that the uh, dungeon world is, uh, I think, best analogy to Dungeons and Dragons. Everyone like knows how Dungeons and Dragons works because of the cultural impact that it has uh, had on all of the fantasy that we consume. Like you have played World of Warcraft, you kind of understand what's going on in Dungeons and Dragons. So there's a lot of co- cross cultural uh, things uh, that have been borrowed into that game. And 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 for, because of that reason, I think people pick it up really easily. Um, okay, uh, and Apocalypse World uh, is really raw, and I think the rule set is actually better than for the Dungeon World because uh, it is uh, like meant meant to do this one thing, and it does it better than uh, Dungeon World. Uh, the the core uh, story is better, but uh, since Apocalypse World is actually about sex. Uh, about sex being power and and how it's uh, used. Uh, all the characters have sex moves. Uh, it's very difficult to find people that are going to like. Oh, yes, I'm so open-minded and interested in uh, playing. Uh, you four guys, you're you're my favorite four guys. Like, let's do it. This is absolutely heterosexual, uh, interesting thing that we are going to do now. Uh, so yeah, uh, difficult thing. But but it it, it it's made by uh, a couple who. Uh, deal in uh, like lecturing about sex and how people react to it and what's going on so uh, so uh, it makes uh, interesting discussion points and uh, from that point of view it's interesting rules to read uh, uh, what choices did the designers make here and, and what are they teaching with one or other uh, skill uh, okay, and Blades in, the, Blades in the Dark is very, very good uh, role-playing game, uh, but it's not very universal. Like, it's one single setting, one single town, and uh, you play thieves that go on heists. Uh, and for that, their rule set is great. If you start playing some other things, it's not so great anymore. Um, and it, uh, the cool thing about Dungeon World is it uh, is asymmetric rule set. Uh, you have player moves, which is like a move is something that you can do in this game, and, and game master moves, which is something that the game master does in the, in the game. Uh, and uh, I think pay attention here and think as a game designer. Uh, but, but, but the when I get to the game master rules, um, player moves, examples, hack and slash, this is actual move name. Uh, and it's described like this, that if you roll two dice, uh, six di- six-sided dice, if you get over 10, then you're successful. If you get over seven, you're partially successful. You have, like, y- you either get damaged or something else happens. Um, you're out of position for the next round or something like that. And and if you roll less than seven, then to tough luck, you failed. Uh, and, and this is the general rule for every every one of these things. Volley is uh, shooting someone someone from from afar. Defy danger is anything that uh, lets you uh, defy danger. You avoid boulders being thrown at you. Somebody shoots uh, arrows at you. You defy danger by moving outside the cover. Whatever. Uh, Sprout lore. Uh, one of the really cool spells uh, spells moves. Um, you. Uh, your your character can uh, ask questions about the world, like uh, bardic knowledge or or whatever, and and uh, the game master answers, or the game master asks the player, "What do you think? What is the reasonable explanation here?" And and the player answer, and then you can like agree, okay, this is actually the good answer. Um, discern realities is uh, similar. You can ask things, uh, "What's going on here? What is in the room? What bird is this behind me?" Uh, parlay, talking to other people, aid or interfere. Basically, when someone else, your player, does something, you can aid the player or interfere with uh, what, what, what the player is doing. Uh, this is very gamery. Like in Dungeons and Dragons, this is what you do, but you have like different names for these maneuvers. But this is all that you do. Like as a player, you have class specific things also. You have viable as as a move and and so forth. But but the, and and there's also move for make camp, 
uh, with with rules, but but basic ones when you're in the situation in the, in the dungeon, these are the ones that get used the most often. Now on to the game master rules, and this is like no wait wait wait. Before we get to the game master rules, uh, we should uh, be aware that game master has agenda, and agenda is that um, uh, you need to portray a fantastic world. Uh, give the world fantastic things, flowers that glow in the dark, uh, little dragons uh, eating your milk in the morning, uh, whatever, make it fantastic. Uh, two moons. Uh, moon that you can eat. Moon that people are actively eating. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, you feel the character lives with adventure, uh, so that don't make boring things like provide the adventure that they're after. Uh, and and play out to find out what or play, play to find out what happens. So um, this is one of the crucial ideas of this whole game system logic. Uh, it tells me to not prepare. Uh, think of the possibilities a bit, but let's see what happens. Don't don't decide before things happen. So uh, you want your uh, you want to have these decisions. Uh, your player is on the edge. Will will the player join the baddies, or will the, will the player uh, throw a baby into the fire to save the world? Like awful things to do in a way. But you can have these decisions. Let's play out. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, game master moves, and still not the game master moves. We have principles. Uh, principles are like general guidelines. Uh, what what you can do as a game master: uh, draw maps, leave blanks, um, embrace the fantastic, make move that follows. This is rule specific, but the idea is that if the player says something, you should work like an Eliza and and try to work on that. Player describing combat: uh, I swing my axe uh, into the shield of the orc, or like actually I try to destroy him roll of dice and you react to that you follow that move suppose the player is partially successful uh easy thing uh, try to give the player a choice basically the choice is you can make full damage uh, and uh, fall or you can leave your axe in the in the shield of the orc and uh, and stay up. Really bad decision, but you can like the player can have the the, the choice of the failure. Uh, then you the game master should never speak the names of the moves that uh, the game master is using. Uh, if the players are aware of these moves, like you can get idea what's going on, but but in general it's it's very fluid and you don't understand what's going on there. Uh, give every monster life, name every person is just for you have a list of names and you should use them uh, so that you can refer to people and they're not anonymous and you can give them some character. Uh, be a fan of the characters. Now, uh, like this one and the map ones are the two of the things which I like to like point out. Like observe two clever ideas: draw maps <laughs> and be a fan of the characters. Like really often it is that uh, like there there will be some uh, like. Game master goes into the mindset that I can't, uh, uh, I can't have this. Uh, I can't have this thing happening uh, right now. Or okay, I was I was jammering a bit. What are you there? Thank you. Because I had the strangest idea that uh, nobody is listening. I've been talking like. An hour. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will. Uh, these are my last slides. You can see the progress bar. We're already like down here. Yeah. At my face. Okay. Uh, I'll continue. Uh, yes. Anyway, mm, uh, fan of the characters. It's it's easy to forget that you're the fan of the characters, and uh, and uh, and you should. Uh, um, you start opposing them, but actually you oppose them by being the oh wow this is really cool what's happening. Uh, and think dangerous. Like every move that they do, like like th what's the worst that would happen them to them? And and uh, don't always go with the, with the worst idea, but but just try to 
try to everything they throw has some repercussion or ripple in the world that that may turn back them at at least be aware of the possibility like it shouldn't be like whatever i do it's very bad mm, okay now the game master moves uh first one is not just relevant but basically use a monster danger or location move uh reveal an unwelcome truth incredible tool like uh you discover something that isn't known to you but it's bad <laughs> always happens uh show signs of an appro approaching threat uh you can like this is very very useful thing like uh, uh, somebody starts to s pick uh, pick a weapon from uh, from the shoulder you, you tell the players let them react if they don't react the weapon is there and is doing already damage if they react they can like have an edge or, or at least uh, run for cover or whatever. Deal damage is a very interesting move. Uh, deal damage doesn't use roll of dice. It's just like the game master says that uh, oops, uh, game master says that uh, you have this much damage and then you mark it on, on the character sheet the dungeon master never rolls. It's very ruthless. Uh, use up the resources uh, you you could see that in my example with orc and the axe, your axe was used up as a resource. Uh, mm. uh, turn the move back on them uh, again. Also, just just what I had an example. The move was to hit the orc, and uh, and there was a repercussion of falling down. Uh, separate them. Classic. Uh, give opportunity that fits a character's ability. Some like you give you're giving someone the chance to shine uh, by just having some. Like, this is a wizard thing. The wizard needs, wizard needs to do it. Uh, you put on your wizard hat, and everything's like really fun. Uh, show a downside of the class, race, or equipment. Uh, obvious uh, opposite of what I just said. Uh, mm, offer an opportunity with or without cost. This was my example also with the uh, orc and the uh, shield. Uh, you had the chance of picking between two choices one of them was damage and worse situation other was no damage and uh, like a bit better situation put someone in a spot is that uh, somebody falls down and some really bad things are just going to happen or, or someone is like in this spot and needs to get out of it somebody's like pulling a sniper rifle and <laughs> and you have the red dot in your head and uh, and the speakers uh, sounded do not move um and tell them requirements and consequences and ask you just you're very open about what can happen and uh, and ask what they want to do uh, this is everything that the game master does and now it's it's vital to understand that when you go and start uh, playing other games your brain does, does like oh my god oh my god what's going on this is all dungeon worlds. So if you go back to your regular Dungeons and Dragons, you discover that okay, this is dungeon world with extra steps. Like what? And 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 you have so many rules, but but all you do as uh, as a game master, you just pick from this list and uh, and apply them. By the way, uh, Apocalypse Worlds uh, world rules are something that uh, like you should play them by the book. You shouldn't improvise. You should only do these things. Nothing else. But they're pretty abstract. We can agree on that, but, but you only do these things. Uh, okay, so procedure uh, of this game. Uh, I know you're tired, but bear with me. <laughs> uh, interesting thing. Uh, first uh, session is played with minimal preparation. Uh, like you don't think of the world uh, a lot. You think of the general ideas of what's what's there, but don't do not do much. And then you start with an action scene. Think of the enemies, think of the location, and, and, and put the players into the situation. See what they do. Uh, in, uh, in fight, uh, they start discovering who they are, what abilities they are, how they play. Uh, there is uh, some character preparation also. Uh, it takes around one hour. Even when you play the first time, it takes one hour if you're not like overly... Uh, Really talkative, but but the thing is, ask questions all the time. That that happens there in this game. Game master asks questions, um, and and then after the first session, you like spend five or uh, or I, I I for me it took uh, three hours to think of uh, of the possible enemies in this world to draw a map 
and uh, and to put down all the all the game mastering things uh and and then you prepare the fronts and now you may ask fronts what are these yes the fronts we need to prepare them uh fronts are uh, i think one of the really really clever things that dungeon world does uh in dungeon to dragons you your front is uh, some plot like overarching great plot thing uh and and you start by making maps uh, telling where the creatures are located uh, mapping out uh, uh, the castles uh, and a whole lot of preparation to to make uh, some huge plot uh in tangible world they're just one sheet of paper like uh, one a4 paper but uh, even like half of it like scribbled down so uh, front is something like this yes somebody is talking there's a microphone coming on. Thank you for muting the microphone. Okay, uh, so uh, front uh, is a Nazi party, for example, uh, and the dangers uh, are like uh, a front contains uh, several dangers. Mm. So uh, one of these would be uh, like. Uh, rise of the nazi party or or the impending doom of tyranny and and then you 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 write down like several things that can happen and 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 the, this front contains this danger it has a description of what's going to happen it has a name uh it has cast who are the guys that are responsible for it who are the interesting guys that you would like to introduce to the players at some point uh what are the moves that they can they can do like uh, i don't know imprison people at some point or like uh it's it's very very abstract and and if if you think in terms of computer games like a lot of uh, baddies have their own special moves and, and this is the special plot move <laughs> so to say and the grim importance is uh, is a very very cool idea this is basically like uh, what is foreshadowing uh, the um, impending doom so foreshadowing one people wearing some symbols on the street then there's a persecution of minorities persecution of anyone that is opposing then some media control then the anschluss and the end in tyranny <laughs> and, and the stakes is the question of whether the paladin will join the nazis uh, uh, simplified thing of uh, of of uh, ultimate <laughs> badness but but the idea is that uh, mm, you can uh, this uh, grim portents uh, is a really cool shortcut for a really lot of preparation. And this is what uh, will happen if the players don't uh, do anything with the plot. Like, you start ignoring the symbols on the streets, you start ignoring the minority thing, and then the plot will slowly, like, turn worse. And at some point it will reveal what's going on, world changes, and you will... Uh, the trick is to have several of these dangers uh, and several of the fronts going on at the same time. Sometimes some fronts are like in separate adventures, but it's very cool to start uh, working with these. If you as a game master, narrative designer, ever have problems, okay, what's going to have next? Look at the fronts. Like, and your fronts immediately give you uh, this uh, cast of characters. You can, you can bring in one of the characters uh, that uh, will talk to them, will have their own plots. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it, it, it's really a compact, compact way of dealing with all this. Um, in practice, uh, the game runs a bit dreamy, uh, which means that uh, uh, it tends... Uh, when compared to other players, uh, other other games that we can use uh, in tabletop, uh, it changes its course a lot, and uh, and it uh, depends very much on what players do. Uh, so uh, in dreams, you open a door, and then suddenly you're in a different place, and then you open another another door, and then some weird things happen. So basically, portals change the world a bit, make you forget uh, forget what happened uh, previously. Uh, I think this happens in this uh, this game. If uh, you as game master uh, aren't careful, uh, it becomes very dreamy. It is sometimes useful, but you need to be aware of that. Uh, then there's partial failure chain. A strange situation, uh, like an enemy appears. Uh, 
and and when players uh, fail, uh, then usually there's a hard move, uh, and something bad happens, and and another enemy appears, and then another one, and then, then it's ridiculous. At some point, you, you start understanding. Uh, difficult to explain, but I had like. I had one enemy appear uh, three times at some point when I was tired, and uh, it wasn't fun. <laughs> I should have gone with something else with failure. Anyway, uh, and then since experience is delivered with failure, uh, people who start min maxing they start rolling a lot to level up faster, and that I like that. That is nasty. <laughs> so choose a play as well for for this game. But of all of the games which I mentioned today, I think Dungeon World is uh, easiest to start with. It has excellent description of what is going on, and uh, and it's it's very accessible. And if you want to have a good game, then Blades in the Dark. Don't forget that one. All right, uh, bring it all together. So I'm uh, running running against time, and I I, I think that we can manage. So, um, why all of this? These things are like extra tools that you can uh, you can bring into your uh, narrative design. Uh, they can't replace any other work. Uh, like uh, you need to be still aware of literature. You need to have your fantasy. You need to have your experience in in order uh, before they can work in uh, in designing narratives. I think some of the elements can be used like be a fan of your characters really universal draw maps also really universal uh but but consider this is not magic you need to do all the work uh my proposal to you is start like immediately if if you want to tell uh, tell stories to people start game mastering immediately like find the rule set find your friends and, and try out uh it lets you experiment with plots see what works with players uh how people react uh, to story beats uh, in real time uh, read people uh great question how to guide people uh, without them noticing that you're leading them along uh this was one of the things one of my players uh told that uh, when he started uh, game mastering uh, then suddenly he re realized that uh, how difficult it, it was uh, to guide the people to do the right thing uh, and how effortlessly I, I had been doing it all the time. Like, uh, <laughs> what was I doing differently? So uh, basically I was presenting the cookie and the stick <laughs> all the time. There was all several cookies and, and several sticks <laughs> approaching. <laughs> so they were in, in, in generally right tracks. Uh, these all the bad experiences with what you have these uh, with with game mastering also teach a lot and and you can become a better one. Uh, and uh, the keyword here is up the iteration count. Uh, like you can uh, you can have uh, one disc Elysium in five years, but you can uh, you can have five games in a year, uh, really rewarding games. Uh, and uh, and this is why you uh, should always play tabletop first. Um, uh, PBTA uh, is the powered by the apocalypse rule set. Uh, so basically, uh, understand how the generic uh, uh, rule set works for this kind of game, and uh, think of the player moves that the player would like to make or can make in your game. And what are the game master moves? What the game can do in turn, and write them down as a list, just like it was presented. Then you have uh, your two lists to consider. Uh, very powerful tool, I think. Uh, and and also, of course, if you make your like, you can work alone, and you can make the fronts work uh, very concise, uh, and and you can bring out and start weaving these things in. Uh, okay, uh, maps are important. I mentioned it. Uh, uh, map is a memorization device. Uh, it's a visual memory. If you have it, uh, great. There's a very rare guy who doesn't. Uh, so basically, if you put a guy to map this guy lives here, you can imagine him living in the hut and, and you remember where he is and, uh, and you can use him. Uh, and it's also an improvisation device. Like I said, you can look at your front, so you can also look at the map, what can happen in the map. Uh, so, uh, so you look at the map, you remember, okay, I put this guy here, I can use this guy for doing things. So printed out maps on your walls, do it.
uh, and, and RPGs have discovered it a long time ago. Uh, so, and I mentioned it already, uh, group impro improvisation is a great thing. Uh, people have ideas, people have ideas together that they wouldn't get individually. Uh, so, uh, it will amaze you if you, if you get people never work alone in this field. Uh, and yeah, Ar Archipelago, Fiasco, Dungeon World, they all have like different strengths here. Uh, for for uh, co-working, but I, I think Dungeon World had the absolute be best uh, plot that they ever created, which ended uh, with decision that players had whether the magic should continue in the world or not. Uh, Fiasco, uh, yeah, can't do an example. It's late in the night, in a hurry. Um, yeah, I'm over here on it from here. So uh, I didn't mention plot weaving, but this is something that as, as a game master, you at some point start doing. Like you, you see the plots, you see their connection uh, in your head. Okay, this is very cool. If 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 these two guys meet and have a battle and uh, and, and, and let the players meet it uh, or see the battle and uh, perhaps uh, decide which of the bad guys has something to do. My game ended uh, with a threefold battle, like uh, three of my dangers met in one single place with players also there. And they were trying to hide and try to uh, impact. So they were actually like a fourth party to this, to this situation. Uh, it's a skill and you can learn it by game mastering. I think it's uh, learnable in, by other methods, uh, but uh, game mastering is... Uh, uh, is a quick way of doing it. You have uh, iteration count uh, in the nine thousands. <laughs> mm. All right. Mm. And now there's a situation. I have questions, comments, and rants, um, and I also have uh, run out of time, um, which means that uh, I will return. Uh, in twenty minutes, and uh, and and I, I'm I'm absolutely willing to discuss my favorite topic uh, with with you all. Uh, if there's like a five minute uh, quick uh, <laughs> comment round, uh, it's okay. Like uh, to say your like media things. Uh, let's let's wrap it up. Uh, in a nice uh, manner. Uh, so the mic is yours. Yeah. Uh, Special board. If anybody has any questions uh, now or in twenty minutes, uh, either just unmute and ask, or write them in the voice chat link dump channel. No questions right now. Anyone? If nobody is going to ask, then I will probably ask. Yes. Cool. Okay. You are enormous. Uh, so uh, let's say that you have uh, had a good campaign. Uh, I guess this is more of like an overarching question. So let's say you have just had a wonderful campaign uh, and you want to preserve it. Uh, you want to make it into something usable that you can refer to later on, for example, if you want to repurpose this storyline into a game narrative, for example. What would be your like top tips be on how to save the information of like interesting things happening, interesting characters being developed, like uh, and doing it in kind of a time saving way? Uh, if if you have the intent to save it uh, at the go, not at the end, uh, then I suggest uh, install a wiki and uh, start filling a wiki with all the characters, all the links, and, and do the interlinking thing. Uh, very useful to like look how Wikipedia has been done and and uh, and start building your own tiny wiki. Uh, I can't show you the examples currently. I have had, I think, like three wikis of uh, of, of this kind that that preserve the cool parts. And uh, in that wiki, you have uh, the quest log uh, with keywords. Uh, it's useful to have it for yourself, 
what happened in this session, not as a story, but just by story points, like uh, small things that happened at this time, hopefully interlinked. Uh, I don't know. That's that, that's 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 how I do it. <laughs> yeah, that actually sounds pretty useful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wikis are great for storing complex information or relational information in like text form. So I guess it makes actually a lot of sense. Yeah, thank uh, you. If you want to, uh, if you want to get the media wiki uh, hints of how to set up a media wiki for a group, I have done it several times, and there are some settings that you need to tweak that it is. Uh, writable only by you and uh, like small things like how to do uploads i can set up a server or just hint what, what needs to be done there very cool uh if there aren't any more immediate questions then uh yeah maybe <laughs> you can have Hello. have the break <laughs> I have I have the break and uh, I'll I'll return at some point uh, for for like random discussions. Yes, <laughs> if, if there's anyone here. Uh, anyway. Well, probably there will be. Bye. Uh, thank you, and uh, yeah, see you soon. And uh, I will stop the recording session now. Thank you everybody for joining. This has been wonderful. It's the last talk of the season from APT, and have a great summer, everyone. <laughs> thank you all, and cut.